Hey guys, it's Marcus here and welcome to TalkSober.com. In today's video, what I want to do is talk to you about what is known as the Jelinek Curve. This is a curve showing the progression from someone starting off drinking to someone ending up an alcoholic to someone getting into recovery. And one of the cool things that I like uh, back when I was drinking, I like the fact that I always kept notebooks. This is something I do even now that I'm not drinking, but I always it kept notebooks like this one that says thoughts uh, to write down my thoughts and of course the kids like to draw cats and things in it, uh, but to write down my thoughts and business ideas and things like that. And something that I like doing is going back through these notebooks and looking at some of the things that I wrote, some of the thoughts I had, some of the things that plagued my mind. And this is going to lead us quite, quite easily over into the Jelinek curve, which is here. I don't know if you could see it. If you can't, don't worry. I'm going to draw a big version here. And what it looks like is it looks like this. It's a big curve that goes down like this, and then it goes into a big loop, and then it starts to go like this, okay? What we're gonna do is we are going to focus on this part here, all right? We'll draw it, it's kind of like a roller coaster looking thing, right, like that, okay? And what we're gonna do here is right, like that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at how this works because the way that most people have this is it starts off with someone, you know, starting with relief drinking and then it starts to progress to the cycle. This is the cycle where you are in alcoholic insanity tea and unable to stop. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the progression and hopefully the camera is in fact getting me on camera. I know it was like over there for a minute. Let's see if it does that again. Okay, it still does okay. Uh, but at any rate, what we have here is the relief drinking down to the alcoholic insanity. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the things that you'll notice from the notebooks as we go through them and you might notice in your own life. Now I know a lot of people think, oh hey, every alcoholic's the same, every person who's a problem drinker is the same and all this stuff. And I got to tell you, I know that you are unique. I know that a lot of things that you're dealing with are different from the things that I deal with, right? Very different. However, there are some similarities. So what I'd like you to do while we might be different is focus on the similarities. So what you're going to see here and what you're going to see as we go through these notebooks is similarities, right? Latch onto the similarities, take the things that you can use and, you know, learn what you can from the stuff that's not exactly like you. So here's what we have. We have occasional relief drinking. This is when you finally figure out, hey, you know what? This uh, drinking thing does something for me. I like it, right? Maybe it's for social uh, situations or whatever. Then what starts to happen is you have more and more relief drinking, right? It starts to get, I don't know why I dotted my E, but uh, more and more relief drinking. And then you start to have an increase in tolerance, right? What you'll notice here, and I noticed it really quick because I'm not a tall person. I'm about 5'1". Um, back when I was really drinking, I was like 130 pounds on a good day. And I noticed that, you know, even though I was 5'1 and 130 pounds, I could drink big people under the table, right? I'd be able to drink way more than them. And this is because of an increase in tolerance and my body getting used to having alcohol in it all the time. We also have um, urgency in first drinks. What does that mean, right? Well, that means you start to need it, right? You now, instead of just going to a social gathering where someone offers you something, now you go there looking forward to it. Or if you're like me, you had to have like four or five before even stepping foot in the social gathering just to be normal, right? Talk about social anxiety. That stuff's not fun. Uh, I used to have to get all, you know, drunk before I went places uh, just to be able to deal with it. Now we also had unable to discuss the problem. 
Now, some of these, because this is written by other people, but some of these um, you'll notice are a little different or we look at in a different way. So while some of them say, you know, hey, there's just denial and everyone's got denial or whatever, uh, what we want to look at is the inability to discuss the problem. And oftentimes this inability becomes from or comes from denial or it might come from, uh, like for me, the fact that my wife was the one telling me I need to quit and that I have a problem was more inability to discuss it because then we had to go into all our issues, right? It was much easier to say, I don't have a problem. She's crazy, not me. All right. Also, we have uh, promises and resolutions fail. Okay. This is where you go and you say, well, you know what? Maybe this is getting kind of out of hand. Maybe there's a problem here, right? Maybe there's something to that stuff my wife's saying. Maybe there's something to this stuff, right? And maybe you say, I'm going to cut back, or I'm going to quit, or I'm going to quit again, or this will be the last time, right? And what happens is your promises and remorses start to fail. And again, some people go through this progression just like it was written, as if it was written for them. Some of them take a little different path. Mine was quite a bit different. Um, we'll talk about how mine was different with the uh, recovery part two. But today, in this video, I want to talk about the progression to the downward spiral spiral, right? Another one um, is loss of other interests, right? You start to lose interest in other things, the things that once make you happy. Now, all you can think about is, hey, you know what? I need to get this drink in me. I need this to survive. This becomes all you are consumed with. Now, it's interesting because a lot of people have this stigma of alcoholism. Like when I thought about it, I thought that admitting I was an alcoholic meant that I was going to be uh, the guy in the gutter, right? Passed out with no family anymore and no money, no nothing without like one shoe on, right? I thought I was going to be this. That's what it meant. Okay, but that's not always what it meant. Um, unfortunately, if I kept drinking, I probably would have ended up that way. But what that means is that um, this takes over. Okay, so now while you might not be that far, okay, yet, maybe never, I don't know. Maybe you'll never get that far. Who knows, right? But what we do know is you start to lose interest and this starts to become your all-consuming desire, right? I would plan my day. I'd sit there in the morning and I'd be like, okay, I've got one box of beer. That's going to last me till noon or nine or whatever. I got to go get some hard stuff for 12 o'clock. I got to time it, right? I knew the exact time it took for people to leave and come home so that I could go out and get what I needed quote unquote discreetly. It wasn't that discreet, but um, that started to happen. And because of that, because this was consuming me, I lost interest in all other things. Work, uh, which was very difficult being self-employed, I have to motivate myself. So when you lose interest, you lose a lot of money. All right. We also have, let's move this over a little bit more, neglect of food. Now, uh, for me, food was always an issue. I always had trouble uh, with my food. If you read the letters on my site at talksober.com slash letters, there's 30 killer letters that I wrote for an alcoholic, from an alcoholic, uh, to help you understand what's going on. Definitely, highly recommend you get that. Uh, what you'll learn is about my food problem, um, where I was unable to eat to begin with, and it got even worse, right? Unable, I, I was able to eat, just it was very difficult for me. Um, but I started to neglect food, uh, things like that. And of course, when I'm consuming 3,500 plus calories of alcohol a day, um, that becomes even worse. We also have a lot of people experience work and money issues, relationship, ship issues, right? And that's why I say not everyone's the same. Not everyone does this because some people, maybe you're fine with work and money. Maybe you're getting along just fine. You don't have any problems. Maybe you don't have relationship issues or maybe you have one or the other. Um, unfortunately for me, I dealt with all of it at the same time. It was like everything crashed. I couldn't eat. I had family issues. I had relationship issues. I had money issues, all of it, right? Work was struggling, everything like that. Um, another thing people do is um, change friend groups, right? 
Uh, this could be because friends are alienating, they don't want to deal with it, or it could be because you want friends that are just like you with the drinking and everything like that, um, who are more tolerant, who um, allow you to get away with your crap, right? Sometimes we seek out people and we say, wow, that's a wise person, but we're denying ourselves the fact that, hey, you know what, there's something wrong and it's not going to get better by me just finding people who agree with me, okay? Um, another one, let's see what else we have, uh, physical issues, tremors. Okay, tremors is a bad one. Uh, morning tremor, I don't know why I keep dotting everything, uh, but morning tremors is a bad one. Uh, a lot of alcoholics uh, have shakiness in the morning. Um, a lot of people you know, feel anxious all the time. When you stop drinking um, or when you're heavy drinking, this stuff happens all the time because your body is lacking uh, what calms it down, right? You overcompensated so much with the calming mechanism that now when your body doesn't have it or it needs it or whatever, you're shaking like a leaf. Not fun, believe me, I've been there. Um, another thing, people try to change location, right? Major life changes, which isn't the best thing to do at this point without dealing with this. Another one is loss of normal willpower. Right, your willpower starts to deteriorate. You're not making good on your promises. Uh, sometimes these things happen, right? And again, I understand that maybe your only problem is just the drinking. I have no idea. But some of these things will go hand in hand. Like obviously, you know, a lot of people have the tremors and things like that. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, moral deterioration, moral slash physical deterioration put deterioration. Now, I want to point out something very important here because a lot of this stuff gets into the moral thing and people say, well, do I need a higher power? Do I need God? Do I need this? Um, and the fact, it's up to you, right? I don't know what you need personally. I just know what worked for me. Um, and, you know, we look at this and we say, well, what does this moral thing mean, right? I'm not like an immoral person. I just have trouble drinking. Well, what this means is that over time, as your drinking progresses, you start to let a lot of things slide. For example, to bring a simple thing up, I was one of those guys who, uh, if I was going to go outside, I had to get a shower, I had to have pants on, I had to have a shirt on with a button collar, and I'm talking just to like go to the grocery store. That's just something I always did in my life. Um, but as my drinking progressed, if I needed to get alcohol, throw on a pair of sweats that are you know half ripped, I'll go get alcohol. It doesn't matter. Uh, so sometimes things start to slide. So when you say moral, right, you don't have to go straight to the Bible stuff or you don't have to go straight to higher powers or whatever. Just look at it for what it is with you. Um, and I think that's some of the trouble that people have when trying to get sober is so many people make this a religious thing and it's not religious, right? Drinking is just a biochemical thing that uh, we need to look at. And it's also a loop, right? That's why I like this Jelnik curve with the loop because we look at this and it's almost like a form of hysteria, right? What's happened is over time you see yourself getting a little bit worse, 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 and then all of a sudden you get into this spiral where you feel like you can't stop. You feel like it's going over. Okay, I got a drink to make it feel okay. I got to go over here, got a drink to make it feel okay. And uh, what's happening is you're in the grips of a form of alcoholic hysteria. And what that means is that you slowly progress to something so slowly that you didn't see all this stuff coming and piling up. Right? It's just like um, people when they're placed in a different situation. Right? If you study situational psychology, you could take someone who's a perfect upstanding gentleman, put him in a certain situation, and he's going to behave like a total freak. Right? And the reason is, is because those things affect us. Now, the big problem here is that when we're drinking alcohol, right? I'm going to draw some eyes here. Okay, when we're drinking alcohol, we have what's known as a blind spot. Okay, the blind spot is making us unable to see the things that's happening to us personally. It's a lot like 
uh, when you have a friend, you know, maybe you're in high school or were in high school sometime a long time ago like me, right? And uh, this friend meets a girl and all of a sudden this friend starts to change and you see it. You say, man, hey, Bill, we used to hang out, you know, we used to play hockey, we used to have fun. And now all you're doing is you're obsessed with this girl, you act like you're depressed, you don't eat, you read love letters, you listen to wimpy music, and you've been turned into a total sissy. And the reason is because the progression led down. He was like, okay, well, I need to do what she likes to keep her liking me. I need to do this, I need to do this. And all of a sudden he's in this cycle, but he was unable to see it because he's blinded by the fact that he loves someone. Now, this example might be good, might be bad. I don't know, it's up to Bob, right? But the example for you is that this stuff is going on and you might not see it. You might not see how this stuff is creeping up on you. You might not see how it's affecting your life and your family and your body and everything like that because on top of what was going on with Bob, right? Bob had this stuff going on with his love. You got this stuff going on and now you're introducing a chemical every day. Just kind of like how Bob is, right? Like he gets the affection and that produces a chemical in his body that says, wow, I feel loved, I feel great. Now, he doesn't see that this is what's going on behind the scenes, but now I'm going to start to open your eyes to the stuff that's going on. So that's what we have there. Another one here is um, you have, uh, what is that? Undefinable fears, Un undefinable, definable fears. Uh, this is one thing that's very, very uh, common in people who drink a lot is undefinable fears. They have these fears that are not rational, uh, that are not real, that they can't really define, right? They have all these fears and they're like, okay, what do I do with this? I don't understand this. And it leads to anxiety and it leads to bad thoughts, right? A lot of this goes hand in hand with OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder, obsessive compulsive thoughts. Uh, guilt. Guilt is a huge one. Okay, a lot of people have guilt. A lot of people have shame. A lot of times people deal with guilt uh, and shame. These are big ones that uh, I dealt with personally. I couldn't get rid of thoughts of guilt, wondering what I did while I was drinking, wondering what I did when I wasn't drinking, trying to recount every single conversation I had uh, with people over and over in my brain, wondering what I said wrong, wondering what I did wrong. Uh, all these things, right? Guilt and shame just started to pile up like crazy. And that was another downward progression. And that's what we want to look at here is the downward progression, right? How many of these things are going on in our life and we're blind to the fact that it's slowly creeping up on us, just like our buddy Bob was blind to the fact that he was getting all like lovey and depressed and isolating and everything like that, which is another one here. People start to isolate, right? Uh, drink alone. That was a big one for me. I did most of my drinking alone and isolated and everything like that, right? And they're looking at this and they're like, man, how do I stop? And maybe at this point, uh, this person or you or whoever it is uh, might be going through and they might not realize that the problem is as bad as it is, right? You might be just going down this progression or whatever, but this is the part you want to watch out for, this spiral, because what happens here is this is when you get the alcoholic insanity and the inability to stop where your thoughts are so bad you can't stop them where your drinking is so bad that you feel like you have to drink to stop the thoughts and have to drink to stop the tremors the anxiety the ocd and all this other stuff that's going on right and that's the deal is we're blind to what's really going on we're blind to the fact that chemical dependency plays such a big part and by chemical dependency, I don't mean anything weird. I just mean that your body now thinks it's dependent on this chemical and you are continuing to drink over and over despite negative consequences in your life. And these negative consequences might be small at first or maybe they still seem small because it's building up and it's building up over time, right? And this is what we want to watch out for. Now, if you are in this place, where you feel like the insanity is creeping up and you are unable to stop, you've tried to stop, uh, you know, over and over you've tried to stop and it's not working, and then what you need to do is figure out a way to get help. 
Now, because chemical dependency is such a big issue, I'm gonna point you over to talksober.com slash help. That's talksober.com slash help. When you try to stop, you wanna watch out for things like when you detox and everything like that, get the medical help you need if you feel like you need it. This stuff is nothing to mess around with. Uh, this would have ended my life had I not gotten help. So we wanna look at this and we wanna say, hey, this is what we need to do. Now, I was so far gone at this point that I didn't care. I was actually inviting the idea of it ending my life, uh, which you'll learn in the letters and the, and the stories and the videos to follow as well. And if you like these, subscribe because I'm putting on all these videos for you so we can get you the help you need and help you understand. Because the biggest thing that I had trouble with, I mean, I read books, I went through all this stuff trying to figure out what was wrong with me. I even got books like, hey, your brain's not broken and um, you know, rewire your brain and things like that. And I was kind of, you know, trying to figure this stuff out. And all along I was saying, what is wrong with me? And I had to figure out, hey, you know what? Nothing's wrong with me. Just like nothing's wrong with Bob over there who's in love and feeling all weird. What happened is you're caught in a trap, right? You're caught in this trap. You are caught in this cycle. You're caught in what I like to call the alcoholic hysteria where you're hysterical, right? It's like that person who's hysterical and they're so hysterical that they don't know they're hysterical and they can't stop. Right? That's where you might be, where you're just like, hey, I can't stop. Now, what we're gonna talk about in the next video is what happens afterward. Once you get help, all this stuff starts to get restored. Now, I know a lot of people think, hey, you need to go and sit at therapy and say, what happened with your mother? That's not what's happening here, right? We need to look at this and we need to say, hey, first and foremost, I need to get this alcohol stuff out of the way because I can't fix any of the other issues until this is fixed because I can't see straight. Right, you're like um, in Back to the Future, right? Remember in Back to the Future, he draws something similar to this. He says, you know, here we are in the 1985, 1985 or whatever, and we need to go to the 2000 where Biff takes the book or whatever, right? And he says, but if we travel from this point in 1985, which is the fake 85, we're gonna be traveling from this one and the future is always going to be messed up because of the point we're traveling from. And what he's saying here is, hey, look, if we travel from a busted up past to the future, we're traveling from the busted up past into the busted up future. So what we gotta do is we gotta go back before things got changed, right? And that's what needs to happen here. No matter what you do, if you try to you know, fix relationship issues, if you try to fix uh, fears and anxiety and OCD, you might get better for a little bit, for a little time, but you're blind to what's really going on, right? You're blind to the fact that the chemical dependency is causing a lot of this, okay? So what we need to do is first and foremost fix this. Now, there's other videos I'm gonna come out with because I had to deal with a lot of personal issues in my life, family stuff, uh, past stuff, and all kinds of things, right? But what you're gonna learn is that when you follow what I'm teaching you, when you follow this stuff, you're gonna learn that things just start to shed off and you start to look at things in a new light. After all, that's what a good therapist should be doing anyway, is getting you to see things in a new light. And what my goal here is to get you to see this in a new light and say, hey, you know what? There might be something there that I haven't been seeing. There might be something causing all this, right? Back up here, way up here, when I thought I started having all these problems, I started drinking from the fake point in time. So everything's gonna be skewed, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to try to fix this one thing when all this is piled up on top of it, right? You're like trying to, to polish a car that has no engine and no transmission and no steering wheel, no seats. It doesn't work, right? What you gotta do is you gotta fix the problem at hand first, which is solve the issue of the drinking, okay? You gotta solve that issue because that is what's getting you in this insanity. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to do that. So if you need help, if you feel like you need help, go to talksober.com slash help, get help now, don't mess around. Uh, watch out for my other video. We're gonna talk about the progression on the upward spiral, the good stuff, right? Hey, how do we get these blinders off? How do we see things for what they really are? And how do we start to live a life? Because here's the deal. When I was in this insanity, I couldn't get out. I didn't care if I lived, I didn't care if I died, I didn't care, right? I didn't care, I was completely apathetic. All I cared about was how much money do I have in the bank and how much can I drink today? That's all I cared about is how much could I drink today, okay? Very important, and that came first. 
first and foremost beyond everything was how much can I drink today? Do I have enough to make it through the day, the night, whatever? Okay, and we look at this and back then if you had said, Marcus, there's a way to solve all this. I would have probably called you every name in the book and said, you are off your rocker. Are you sure you're not drinking? Because you can't solve all this. There's no way to help my problems. There's no way to help my money stuff. There's no way to help all the things that I screwed up when I was drinking. But I got to tell you, from the other side, there is a way to help and it's a change of perspective. So first, get the help you need, then check out my next video on change of perspective and the upside spiral of the Jelinek addiction and recovery curve. So, I hope this makes sense to you. Um, I hope that you understand that you are not in this alone and you're not the only one going through this stuff. A lot of people have gone through this before and while I might not know your exact situation, I could probably help you see things a different way. And that's what we want to do is show you that, hey, look, trying to fix one of these things isn't going to help if you don't fix the big problem because you're going to be traveling from the skewed point in time to a messed up point in time in the future. So we got to go back and we got to fix the big problem, which is a problem at hand. We got to get you to stop drinking no matter what. So I'm Marcus. Make that ass fall off packed, right? Don't drink today even if your ass falls off. If you feel like you need help for uh, detox or anything like that, check out uh, talksober.com slash help, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this as much fun as I had making it. Thanks again, and I'll see you at talksober.com.